نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وان هذا صراطي مستقيما فاتبعوه ولا تتبعوا السبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انكم من يعش منكم بعدي فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا فعليكم بسنتي وسنه الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين تمسكوا بها وعبدوا عليها بالنواجذ وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة ويروى وكل ظلالة في النار صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam First of all I would like to make a dua that oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of our ibadat in the holy month of Ramadan which we or any other muslim have done all over the world oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat Amen. we have lot of shortcomings lot of naqais and defects in our ibadat and we do admit that but we are your slaves and we are the followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so please be kind and nice to us as you are amen my dear respected brothers and sisters i would like to mention a few things number one that these brothers of ours they were of the view that we should have arrangement for eid prayer i told them that my problem is that my tongue beats me because i am a man who does not know any compromise on thee because our mashayikh rahimahumullah the day when they put this turban on our head so they said to us and that is written in our sanad and shahada wa nusi al akh al karim allah yansana fi ad'iyati as saliha wa an yarfa'a alam at tawhid wa sunna qami'an lil shirk wal bid'ah that we make a wasiya we enjoin our brother we order him not to forget us in his dua whenever he is making dua to make a dua in favor of his sheikh as well and furthermore that he must keep the flag of tawhid and sunna and he must try to oppose any type of shirk and bid'ah so that was actually a contract and that was a noble and gentle contract between a student and sheikh and as a student we are bound to do that otherwise first of all we would be blamed by our mashayikh then by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and later on the blame by allah that is something different may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us Amen. and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us maghfirah anyhow my respected brothers and sisters in islam so a few things i told them that whenever you will decide just give me a call and you will find me there because my sheikh rahmatullah alayhi after dawr hadith he told me that look 
wherever you think that even one single human being, not Muslim, one single human being can benefit of your speech or your talk or whatever. So don't miss that opportunity. Just go there and convey the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, they arranged it almost in 48 hours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless you as well. Because to arrange that was difficult, but to respond that was furthermore difficult. Your response is very good. That is appreciated in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a beautiful big gathering of nice people. Those who are committed to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith which I have related here. A sahabi says, رضي الله تعالى عن خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطبة مودع ويروى مودع When you see of someone, he is going to India, to Pakistan, to Bangladesh, to Saudi Arabia, to Egypt, to Afghanistan, to Iran, or to any other country, to Jordan, to Palestine, where he comes from. And you see him up. So at that time, a very close relative or friend, he gives some word, please do this. Please do this. Please do this. So that is the khutbah of muwadda and the khutbah of muwadda and the, the one who is departing, he is a father for example and he is leaving behind his young kids here. So at the time of Tawdi and Siya, he is giving them some word that my son, don't miss your class and look, take your, your, your sister in proper time to the school so she may not miss the class. That is called the khutbah of muwadda. So that's why the Muhaddisin and especially Imam Tirmizi Rahmatullahi Alayhi He has mentioned both words Khutbana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Khutbata Muwadda'in or Khutbata Muwadda'in As we were seeing him off and he was departing Yes, and we were giving him some word Or he was giving us some word Because he was leaving us behind And that is okay Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a hadith when he was in his uh, last uh, days, so Sahaba Rizwanullah alayhi majma'in, they said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to approach you whenever we face any difficulties, we need solution. So, we used to come to you. Now when you will no more be here in this world, what we will do? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, Taraktu fikum amrain. لَن تَظِلُّ مَا تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي I am leaving behind amongst you two things. If you will follow that in word and spirit, you will never go astray of the path of Allah. One is the book of Allah and the second thing is the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now our commitment is with the book of Allah and with the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Yes, but as you know, we are living in human world and human are much more influenced by their desires by the surrounding by the environment and especially the dominant culture when you are living in a non-muslim country so dominant culture yes that overtakes so there we are starting compromising on our deen as well rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said such a time is coming upon you having your iman intact that will be just like keeping burning fire in your, in your, in, in your hands. That will be such, more, such difficult. But Prophet said, keep it and have it and don't throw it. Because compromises when it starts, it does not have any end. Yes, there is no dead end to compromises. It will go, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and forbid. The end will be that you will do compromise on your iman. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I was referring to a hadith now that Prophet Sallallahu said, Look, when I say a word or put a false charge against this brother, at that time I should think for a while that I am going to die, I will face my qabr, I will go to the day of judgment, I will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be putting me to question for each and every single word of mine. That do you have any proof in this regard? Sayyidina Ibn Umar, he was reciting 
A surah of Holy Quran, Wail Lil Mutafifin. Yes, those who are corrupt in business, cheating people in their businesses. Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Both to such like people. Allazina is aqtadu ala nasi yastawfoon. Wa idha kaluhum awwadanuhum yukfiroon. But then Allah said, Allah yazunnu uraika. Such like people who are doing cheating in one way or the other or any way, they do not think that they will be given a new life on the day of judgment when they will be standing there in the court of Allah. In the court of Allah, there is no any attorney there. There is no any advocate there. There is none to speak on your behalf, to argue in your favor. You and only you, you will be responsible for what you have done, for what you have said. If, for example, look, uh, my, my, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and you are much more respected to me, the brothers and sisters who are here today, because they responded on a notice of only 20, 24 hours, and they came here. What is my relation with you and what is your relation with me? Only la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And what is the requirement of that kalima commitment to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here today, we will make only one promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. That Allah, as long as we are living in this world, we will be committed to your book as much as we can, into the sunnah of your prophet as much as, you, as we can. Because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, you are bound ma amartukum bihi. Fatu minhum astatad. Whatsoever I have ordered you, so do as much as you can. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has ordered us a lot of things, but we are weak, we are raif, we cannot do and practice all of that. Prophet وسلم, he made us relaxed, yes, that feel comfortable. But Prophet وسلم, regarding prohibitions, he said, But whatsoever I have forbade, or I have forbidden, Prophet وسلم, said, stop. There is no gray area. Regarding practice, there is gray area. Something you can do and some you cannot. But regarding prohibition, there is no gray area. And our problem is that as far as the case of doing is concerned, we do not do much. But as far as the case of prohibition is concerned, we jump everywhere to prohibitions. So Allah says, Alaya zunnu ulaika, annahum abhosun. They do not think they would be given a new life on the day of judgment. They will be standing in the court of Allah. What? Donut will be distributed there. Yes, one of our brothers, I should not mention his name, but he brought us donut today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his job and his business. Amen. And all of you, you, you uh, uh, did a great job because if you are spending five minutes here, that is much more. Yes, here in America, we say time is money. Time is money. Time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is not money, that is something else. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, so we will not be there standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because gulab jamun is going to be distributed. Our baklava is there and people will be taking a piece of baklava. No, there will be accountability. And that was known to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. Yes, he got fainted. Not only once, three times he got fainted because of this one ayah. Yes, and we are reading Quran from Alhamdu to Annas. How many times we get fainted? He got fainted three times because of this one ayah. Allah yazunnu ulai kannu magosun li yawmin azim yawma yaqoomu al-nasu li rabbil alameen. When people will be standing in the court of Allah for their accountability. Here, you can cheat the court. Yes, you can bribe even. Yes, you can approach them. You can get a degree of your own, what you like, but in the court of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, وَلَا يُخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْدٌ وَلَا يُقْبَلْ مِنْهَا شَفَاهَا وَلَا هُمْ يُنْصَرُونَ يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make any exception of any nafs. يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ Nobody can avail anybody anything on that day. And Allah says, Wala yubbalu minha shafaha. There the approach and reference doesn't work. There the approach doesn't work. Wala yubbalu minha adlun. 
their bribery doesn't work wallahum yunsarun and gang doesn't work and there are official gang and unofficial gangs anyhow my respected brothers and sisters in islam so anyhow my point was that that day is coming what is the proper arrangement or preparation for that very day commitment to the book of allah and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say innakum may yaqish minkum ba'di fa sayara ikhtilafan kaseera i was not referring to ikhtilaf and differences of deen and uh, kufr are islam and kufr that was there in the time of rasulullah as well and it was very strong at that time because we don't have as much uh, uh, arch enemy as abu jahal was as abu lahab was as walid ibn mughira was as nazr ibn haris was as the case of haris ibn amir was each and every one was much more heavy than a big institution in their enmity with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam can you imagine that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was praying here in the front yard of the house of allah he was in his sajda he was in his sajda a dirty full of filth fetus was brought by uqba ibn abi mughi allaheen and he threw it on the back of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that was not the fetus of goat that was not the fetus of sheep that was not the fetus of any other small animal that was the fetus of camel so just imagine how heavy that is Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in his sajda he put it on his back sayyida fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she got informed that something like that happened she came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she yelled at these guys that what wrong my father has done to you people why you are insulting him to that extent you don't have any human norms and values and they were laughing at sayyida fatima and once i was referring to that when you will show your kindness to prophet or his family in any way sayyida fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha once abu jahal he raised his hand on rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyida fatima yes she was there she came to and she looked at abu jahal he said what a dirty man you are why you are doing that to my father has he ever said anything bad to you so he slept sayyida fatima the small girl of 7 8 years he slept her so she was crying and she said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya bata ma sa fat my dear what can i do what prophet said prophet told her that look they all been he say uncle abu sufyan he said yes just go to him and tell him because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he knew that what should be done so she came to say nabu sufyan at that time he was an arch enemy of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as you know that every battle was led by abu sufyan against rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was the chief of the army staff so fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she came to abu sufyan and she said uncle abu jahal saab amr ibn hisham uncle amr ibn hisham slept me said abu he did said yeah. come on in front of the people who were sitting there Abu Sufyan said to Fatima, "Slap him in such a way as he slapped you." So Sayyida Fatima, yes, and at that time Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became that much happy that he said, "Allahu Mahdi Abu Sufyan, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guide Abu Sufyan to your deen." And that was the dua that that arch enemy at the time of Fath Makkah. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, "Ya Muhammad, ina fi zinar, ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu." So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam my point was that innakum may yaish minkum ba'di fa sayara ikhtilafan kaseera that ikhtilaf prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not mean the ikhtilaf of Islam and kufr ikhtilaf inside Islam and sometimes that ikhtilaf which be, will be much more worse than the ikhtilaf of Islam and kufr why because you put your trust in muslim yes that he is also speaking good he is referring to aya He is referring to hadith and respected brothers. Case is not that of ayah and hadith. Case is that of commitment to ayah and hadith. There is a group. They are known as rebellious or khawarij. And khawarij are those people who were with Sayyidina Ali radhiyallahu taala in the beginning, fighting against Sayyidina Muawiyah radhiyallahu taala. But not Ali himself. 
Now, Ali himself, but a representative of this group, Sayyidina Abu Musa Ash'ari, radiyallahu ta'ala an, and the representative of the group of Abu Sufyan, Sayyidina Amr ibn al-Has, radiyallahu ta'ala an, they both agreed upon mediation, or arbitration, or salisi, or tahkim. Even though Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an, he was not of the view that it should be like this, and if that is, so from their side, there is Amr ibn, Amr ibn al-Has, who is Dahiyatul Arab. Nobody can speak to him on table talk. And that's why the people of Makkah used to send him to Kesar, to Caesar, to, to Kisra, to Khusro, a Persian empire, because nobody was able to argue with Amr ibn al-Has. So Sayyidina Ali said that, why you people jumped? You sent Abu Musa Ashari, he is a very nice man. He is a very, he is not that sharp as Amr ibn al -As, so it means you got beaten. That you got beaten, because your defeat is must. He cannot speak the way Amr ibn al -As is speaking, I know him, he is Dayatul Arab. But anyhow, when this gathering was taking place, so a group of the people of Ali, they became rebellious to him. And they said, they said that Muawiyah was kafir, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. He was a kafir. When you are talking to him on their table, so you became a kafir as well. So neither we believe in the rule of Muawiyah nor in the rule of Ali. We believe only in the rule of Allah. And for the said purpose, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he was there in the Masjid of Kufa. He was giving his khutbah and these people came and they were yes, having their own flag and shouting slogans and they were saying, Inil hukmu illa lillah. We believe in the rule of none but only Allah. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he smiled and he said, Kalimatu haqqin, only the bihal batil. Words are true, meaning is wrong. <laughs> words are true, but meaning is wrong. Because words is there of Quran, in hukmu illa lillah. But Allah has someone here in this world to apply his rule. But they were saying that we don't believe in the rule of anybody but only Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now to this khawarij, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he was sending Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala that you should go and talk to them. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, when he was going, Ali radiallahu ta'ala asked him, Ya ibn Ammi, my cousin, let me ask you one thing. Yes, based on what you will talk to them? Based on what? So he said, Ala kitab in the book of Allah, he said, Hum a'la mumin ka kitab in Allah. The way they will be stressing with the word of Allah, that is something else. Yes, they will trade you in the word of Allah. So because they are playing with the words of Allah. When you don't have the fear of Allah, so far you can play with the book of Allah. You can be with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You can be with Sharia, with Fiqh, with Ali. Because it's a fatak al haya of al mashita. When haya is gone, decency is gone, then you can do whatever you want to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our haya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us with haya say ameen. ameen. Because I was telling now these brothers, the Prophet sallallahu said, Inna al-Iman wa al-Haya tau aman. That haya and iman, these are two conjoined twins. There are twins and there are conjoined twins. 99% resemblance. Yes, and sick like twins, if one of them becomes sick, the other one becomes sick as well. They have close connection to each other because of genes. Yes, and uh, 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 number two, if one of them dies, the other dies as well. 98, 99% that is the case. So Prophet says that Iman and Haya, these are two conjoined twins. If one will go, the other will not stay here. It will go as well. If Haya is gone, Iman will go. If Iman is gone, Haya will not remain there. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, anyhow, my point was the commitment with the Sunnah of Rasulullah in the Kumayya Ishmin Kumbahadi for Sayyara Ikhtilaf and Kasira for Alekum the Sunnati was now people will, yes, because you are nice people. You are very simple Muslims. We are very simple. There is a alim of Ilmi Kalam, and Ilmi Kalam is such a ilm that some ulama they don't like it because that is philosophical talk about Quran and Sunnah. Philosophical talk huh? about Quran and Sunnah. They are talking about the book of Allah and Sunnah of Rasulullah in the light of philosophy. Yes, and sometimes based on philosophy, a person becomes confused in the ayah of Holy Quran or in the hadith of Rasulullah. But great ulama like 
the first one in this regard who wrote a book that is called Al Fiqh Al Akbar, written in Islam. The first ever book in Ilm Al Kalam that was written by Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Ali, known by the name of Al Fiqh Al Akbar, and Alama Ali Al Qari, Rahmatullahi Ali. His ancestors they were from Herat. That's why we call him Alama Qari Hirami. Alama Qari Hirami. But he was born in Mecca, and he was Jarullah, the, the 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 neighbor of the house of Allah. So he was a very great scholar. In each and every field, almost he has written a book in Tafsir, in Hadith, in Fiqh, in Ilm Kalam, in Nah, in Sir, in Mantra, in Philosophy. Wherever you will find, Waqala Allah Maqari. So those who are from Herat, they must be proud of Allah Maqari. Yes, that he was our cousin and he was from our ancestors. So anyhow, Allah Maqari Hirami, Rahmatullahi Ali, he has written an interpretation of the book of Imam Abu Hanifa that's called Sharaful Fiqh Al Akbar, a very famous book in this regard. Imam Shafi said that's the best. The book of Imam Abu Hanifa is the best of Ilm Al Kalam. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and uh, sisters in Islam, I was referring to that a great alim who was debating based on Ilm Al Kalam with other ulama the issues concerned. But when he was dying and passing away, in his last moment, he said that I wasted my time in all these debates of aqaid and faith. And well, an atarifu ana ala aqidati al is that at this time of my death, I do admit that my belief is the belief of the old woman of my area. Because the old people, and especially the women, whatever they have heard of this childhood from Mullah, from Sheikh in Masjid, or on the speaker, they are committed to it. If you will tell them 10 things, they say, oh, that's it, that's it. Say, Muslim would say, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yes, that is a strong imam that they are committed with the words of their Masha'ir. Those who are talking to them in the light of Quran and Sunnah. So this is the case of simple Muslims, and simple Muslims are good. Yes, this artificial Muslim, yes, or in other words, you can say that westernized Muslim. Yes, that's very dangerous. For me, they are very dangerous. And to me, look, sometime I do mention that to me, someone who read a little bit about me and then he got westernized, he is much more worse for deen than an Muslim. Because an Muslim, when he will speak about your deen, he will say he's an Muslim, what he is doing with our deen? What he knows about? But this guy, He's a Muslim. When he will say, oh, he speaks good. So then what? Abu Jal was speaking very good as well. You don't know? Abu Jal, he was speaking very good. He was very eloquent. So my dear respected, case is not of speaking. Case is that of commitment with the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah and Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So anyhow, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu said, Fa'alaykum bi sunnati, you are simple Muslim, what you will do? Fa'alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al-khulafa al-rashidin al bahdiyin You should follow my way and the way of my khulafa, my successors. All Sahaba, Rizwanullah alayhi wa they were the successors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why Abu Hanifa said, Rahmatullahi alayhi, in kana fi kitab illahi fa bin rasi wal ayn, wa in kana fi sunnat rasuli fa bin rasi wal ayn, wa in kana khani sahaba, fa naakud bi qawli man nasha, wa in kana amman ba'dahum fa hum rijalun wa nahu rijal. Abu Hanifa said, Rahmatullahi alayhi, if something is very clear, we mentioned there in the book of Allah, from the bottom of our heart, we cannot say anything in this regard, we will follow that. If that is in the sunnah of Rasulullah very clear, from the bottom of our heart, we cannot say anything in this regard, no any reservation. Just follow in word and spirit. And if that is from Sahaba, but they have different definitions, a different interpretation, a different application regarding that issue. So everyone is Sahabi. So then according to circumstances, the Mujtahideen and the jurists, they pick the saying of one Sahabi. Like Shafi, according to his circumstances, he picked up the saying of one Sahabi. Abu Hanifa picked up the saying of another Sahabi. رضي الله تعالى عنه، and both are accepted to Allah سبحانه وتعالى، both are rewarded، both are doing good، and that's well، that's the path of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. but Abu Hanifa said، وإن كان عم بعدهم، if that is such a thing which came from people after Sahaba، mean tabi'in. so Abu Hanifa himself was a tabi'i. I was making a research in this regard. Abu Hanifa met seven Sahaba. رضوان الله عليه مجمعين. Abu Hanifa, in Ayyemmai Arba'a, he is the only tabi'i, all others are atba'u tabi'in. He met seven sahaba, Rizwanullahi alayhi wa jma'in, and he narrated one hadith from Anas ibn Malik. He said that I was only seven or eight. 
when my father took me to Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala an, I remember the complexion of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala an, and he was telling my father that Rasulullah sallallahu said talabul ilmi fariza ala kulli muslimin wa muslima. This is the only hadith Abu Hanifa narrated directly from his sahabi. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala an, talabul ilmi fariza ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. Every male muslim and female muslim is bound to understand deen to that extent which he needs for his own practice. Sometimes we get involved in philosophical talks regarding the brother, do you know all about your prayer, how to pray in the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to pray? No, you do not know. Why you are wasting your time? Yes. One of our Sheikh of Sheikh, Amir al-Sheikh Sayyid Allah Shah Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, once he was giving a speech, so one brother asked him, that Sheikh, murde amari baato ko sunte hain, the deads in the, the graves, they can hear us what we are saying. So Shaykh Ahmadullah Ali said that brother, you know all about your prayer. To record prayer, how many farais are there and uh, what is the difference between shart and rukun regarding uh, your prayer? He said that I don't know. He said Allah will not ask you on the day of judgment that uh, the dead people they fear or they do not, but he will ask you how was your prayer. Rose Mahshar ke jangu das boar. Awaleen pursa shay namaz bohar. On the day of judgment, the first ever question by Allah after Iman is, You are a Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasooluh. What about your prayer? What your records say? So it means that is not the case. That, okay, that's, yes. Little bit of vacuum is there. We'll fill it from something else. No, that is losing your credit. If your prayer is not okay, or you were not okay in prayers, so you lost your credit. And here in America, if somebody loses his credit, what happened to his business? What happened to his purchase and sell? Yes, anybody will give him a car or a house? Tell me. So it means that you lose your credit then. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I don't want to prolong more. But anyhow, to tell you a little bit about uh, Eid al-Fitr, as you know, the Ramadan, that is the month of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as in Hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rajab Shahrullah. The month of Rajab is the month of Allah, wa Sha'ban Shahri, and Sha'ban is my month, and that's why Aisha said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do fasting in the month of Sha'ban, he was not doing it any other month but only in Ramadan. And wa Ramadan, Shahru Ummati, and Ramadan is the month of my Ummah. Anyhow, that passed. But whatever we have done, we have a lot of defects. We have a lot of shortcomings. We have missed a lot. We have, and that's why. Sahaba Rizwanullahi alayhi majma'in, they used to cry when Ramadan was passing. That that was an opportunity. And we don't know, we availed it or we did not. We did proper or we couldn't. So anyhow, they passed, but we will make a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat, whatever we have done in the holy month of Ramadan. And now, the Eid al-Fitr, that is actually not only the celebration. This is not a festival only. This is actually to pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave you the month of Ramadan and you did what you did in the month of Ramadan. So that's actually paying thanks to Allah. And then Salatul Eid, that is a way of thanking and gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Sadaqatul Fitr which you pay. Sadaqatul Fitr, that is actually just like say, the sahwa to your ibadah or to any harm which you have caused your ibadah in the month of Ramadan. If we miss any wajib, forgetfully in our prayer, what we do in the end? Say, Sajda Sahwa. Sajda Sahwa is actually putting a bandage on wound. Yes, that you injured your ibadah, your prayer, so just put a bandage there upon. So this is the sawa is actually a bandit. And as you know, the bandit, bandit, it takes the hukum of your organ. For example, you have wound here. Yes, you put a bandit. So at the time of wuzu, you will take the bandage and wash them? No, you will wash over the bandage because the bandage has become just like a part of your organ. You know what I'm saying? So that is the case of Sayyidah Sahu. Now, in the month of Ramadan, there was a star time. There was a whole time, forgetfully, or by way of mistake, maybe we have broken our fast before time and yet we do not know. Or we have eaten something after sahur and we didn't know that we did it. Or we did something makru in our fasting and we did not notice it. Or something like that. So now you need a bandage. So actually, this Sadaqatul Fitr, that is a bandage. But respected brothers and sisters in Islam, 
This sadaqat al-fitr is wajib on who? According to Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. They say that every Muslim is bound to pay sadaqat al-fitr. Because every Muslim, he fasted. So when he fasted, so he caused some damage to his ibadah. When he caused some damage to his ibadah, so he has to pay the fine. And fine, yes, if you cannot pay, then you have to do community work. You know what I am saying? There is no excuse. That's what the three Imam, but Imam Abu Hanifa says, no, this is ibadah. And this actually, yes, on one hand, that's just like the, the sawa. On the other hand, that's actually paying thanks to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Abu Hanifa says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding sadaqat and charity, tu khazu min aghriyaihim wa turaddu ila fukaraihim, that must be taken from the rich people and maybe given to the poor people. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he divided people into two groups. That the rich has to pay and the poor has to pay. And if you say that the poor also have to pay, so to whom they will pay them? And who will take that? So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that is one point. Another point is that when somebody all alone call me and he ask about Sadaqat al-Fitr and he's from Pakistan or India or Afghanistan, that part of the world, most of us we are Hanafi. So I tell him that you should pay four dollars. You should pay huh, four dollars. But if a community asks me, so then I go that yes, for the community that is eight dollars per person. So then there the people become confused that in fatwa also Qadisab is taking care of his friends. <laughs> yes, he's making 50%. This is actually not the case. The case is that there are two hadiths. And one hadith that is narrated by uh, all muhaddisin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that that narrated by Abu Sayyid Khudri, رضي الله تعالى عنه, that saw him in shagirin, aw tamarin, aw zabibin, aw ta'amin. One saw, that's a type of kale, that's a type of paymana, that's a type of weight you can say, that one saw in shagirin of barley, or of dates, aw zabibin, or of raisin, aw ta'amin, or food. Uh, food. Now these three Imams said that ta'am or food mean al-hinta, the wheat. Al-hinta, the wheat. But we say that there is another hadith and that is by Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, that Amarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sa'an min sha'irin aw zabibin aw tamarin aw nisfa sa'in min burrin. So ta'am or food could be barley, it could be baklava, Yes, it could be pizza, it could be something else, it could be vegetables even, that is food. Yes, so when you explain it with wheat, we can say that this is not wheat, this is barley. Yes, but the other hadith very clearly says, Aw nisfa sa'in haaf sa'a min burrin of wheat. So Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he has taken this hadith into consideration and the other, and Abu Hanifa supported his idea with a aqli dalil, with a reason. And the reason is that at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mostly their food was either raisin or dates or barley. And sometimes they used to eat hinta or wheat. Or hinta or wheat. Because at that time, the wheat was much more expensive than date and raisin. So they were unable to eat it. And in that area, mostly the wheat was not grown. Barley was grown, dates were grown, and raisin were grown. So anyhow, when somebody asks me, yes, back home when I go, so there 100% we are Hanafi, so there I don't say that pay eight dollars or one swa of hinta. No, I say yes, I mean hinta because we are Hanafi, but here in a community, as you know, the Shawafi are there, the Hanabila are there, the Mawaliks are there, the Ahlul Zawahir are there, the Hanafis are there. So if I will say in a big mosque where people from all around the world they are living here in their community. Some of them, they are Shafi, some of them, they are Maliki, they are Hanabila, they are Hanafi, they are Ahlul Zawahir. And I will say, that okay, people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and India, they may pay four dollars. And people from other parts of the world, they must pay eight dollars. So people will be looking at each other. Discrimination? Yes, let's sue him. Yeah. That, that's the easy way to sue. Yes, let's sue him because he's discriminating. For them, four dollars, for us, eight dollars. Yes, so that's why. There we give a fatwa based on the mazhab of Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad. 
the two students of Imam Abu Hanifa because in this regard their mazhab is like the mazhab of Jumhur Imam Malik, Imam Shafi and Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahumullah so not to make any confusion there we say just eight dollars per person and that's good because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ تَتَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ if somebody will pay more now we fix the eight dollars so if somebody want I want to pay eighty dollar per person yes you can pay eight hundred dollar per person and give it to me I'll be thankful to you Yes, anyhow, my dear respected, yes, regarding your zakat and your sadaqat al-fitr, as you know, from the masjid when I was there, so I was telling you that if you can, so pay your zakat and your sadaqat to your own people in your own country. And let me tell you one thing. Number one, if you are paying here to masajid, masajid are non-profit organizations, they are not welfare organizations. They are welfare organizations, are not profit organizations. Yes, say, non-profit non organization is taking money or giving money? It is taking money. So don't give them this other uh, uh, responsibility and other duty. That is not welfare organization. That is number one. And number two, as you know, they, if the masajid are giving your zakat or your sadaqat to somebody who is not eligible for, so your zakat is not done. Because your zakat would be done the moment when it will go to the hand of a fakir, a poor one, not to the president of the masjid, or the board of the masjid, or the imam of the masjid. No, your zakat would be paid at that time. You cannot say, oh, I gave it to Qadzah, or I gave it to the, such and such mosque. Yes, and my job is, no, your job is not done. Your job will be done when they will pay it to fakir because they are your attorney only. They are your agent only. So that's why my recommendation from long, long ago is, they, you are from Pakistan, people are dying of hunger. You are from Afghanistan and especially, you are my Pashtun brother, let me very clear with you, most of us, here from Afghanistan, let me very clear with you, we are living here in America, yes? Yes or not? Yes. We got shelter when Russia attacked us. Yes or not? Yes. We came here with political asylum. Yes or not? Yes. So who fought there against the Russian invasion? The Mujahideen. Who? The Mujahideen who got martyred in the path of Allah, their kids, they are living in starvation. You are earning this dollar because of the blood of their father. So if you are not giving them some money from your own pocket, please for the sake of Allah, give them the money of Allah, which you owe Allah, which is zakat, which is sadaqah and sadaqah al -fitr. You cannot do that even. You are bound to do that, especially with the Pashtuns and with the Afghans. Yes, we are bound to send ours there because these people are in need of. Their kids are in need of. Yes, they are crippled. They are amputated. Yes, they are. And they are looking for one and two dollars. But because of their gira or because of their self-respect, they will never ask anybody. If somebody can stand in front of the invaders, he will never sacrifice a hizza for one or two dollars. He should have sacrificed that for millions of dollars at that time. That you need that million, I will be your spy. I will be your jasus. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that is my humble request and convey this message of mine. Convey this message of mine for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, same in the case of Pakistanis. If they are earning here, their, their cousins are poor. I know that. My cousins are very poor. I am poor as well. But I try to my best to take them a little bit. Yes, please, this. Please take this. Please. Yes, last uh, time. When I go here from, as you know, that here the shoes are good. Yes? The shoes, the quality is good. So I take two boxes of shoes only, nothing else. And I give to my cousins and to ulama and to this and that. So in the airport, yes, one guy said that uh, you have a shoe store. I said that, sir, this is for free. If you are eligible for, you can fix one and take it. <laughs> yes. Because if I would have told him, yes, I'm here to the... I don't say that some people, they are collecting things that people in Pakistan, they are in need of for dresses. So they collect dresses and then they sell it there in Lunda Bazaar. They don't have any fear of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't, they don't have any fear of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Collecting dresses here, if I will collect dresses here, in the name of Afghans there who are naked to... to, 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 to. Yes. And then I will go and sell it. Do you think I am a human? Yes. Put Muslim on the side. I am not a human. I am a wild beast, even worse than wild beast. So anyhow, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, now 
اس پارے دی کے ساتھ صلاح تعید اس کے ساتھ دی صلاح تعید اس آتد السمن آت بیکاز تری امام جو ہم مالک شافی اور احمد ابن حمبل موسیقی دے ارنا چوز دی ورڈ واجب وین دے یوز دی ورڈ واجب دے مین فرس سو فرسج لائی تنگ ویچ از اپ دین سنت موقت بٹ لور دین فرس Sisters are requested, please don't make noise, otherwise you are losing, you are losing your reward. We are sitting here in Ibadah. So anyhow, my respected uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, so they call it Aqadu Sunan. Aqadu Sunan is equal to wajib according to Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi. But Abu Hanifa differentiate between farz and wajib. That wajib is up then sunnah the muwakkad and lower then farz. That is in between sunnah and farz. So anyhow, practically, This prayer is just like Faraz, but Atiqad wise and faith wise is not that Faraz, but that is lower than Faraz. But in practice, there is no big difference. And this is a specific type of Ibadah, and we do it only twice a year, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Usha. And the way how to pray is a little bit different, so that's why sometimes we become confused, and that's why the Imam or the Sheikh is bound to teach and tell the people how to pray. So respected brothers uh, uh, and sisters in Islam, we will be praying our Salat Eid according to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, because one Imam can follow only one Imam at once. I cannot follow all of them. Yes, so the other three Imams, their way of ibadah is that in first rakat they pray seven, uh, they uh, uh, offer seven takbirat and the second one five takbirat. I, I think I should not make a joke, but only uh, a latifa that maybe they are saying Allah Akbar the whole day. Because seven plus five is twelve. So anyhow, um, according to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, three extra takbirat in both rakat, but The way is, or the procedure is, that after the takbir iftita, which is farniya, we will say three takbirat, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmaq wa ta'ala jadduk wa jalla sara wa jubun wa la ilaha ghairu, and then we will say three takbirat, raising our hands as we are raising for takbir iftita, and all these extra takbirat as well, and hanging it with two takbirat, but with the third one, we will hold it as we are holding in our prayer, then the imam will recite, then Ruku, then to Sajda, then for the second Rakaat, Imam will start recitation from the very beginning. And after the Qiraat, he will do three Takbirat extra. With everyone, you will be leaving your hands hanging. With the fourth one, you will go to Ruku. And when the prayer is done, so after prayer, there will be a Khutbah that is part of Salat, as you know. There Salat Jumah is Faraz, but the Khutbah of Jumah is Wajib. The khutbah of Jumaat is wajib. This prayer is wajib, so the khutbah is sunnah. Because you cannot equalize the khutbah with the prayer. The khutbah will be little bit lower in position than the actual prayer. So Juma Salat is for us, but the khutbah is wajib. This Salat is wajib, but the khutbah is sunnah. And sunnah is also a part of ibadah. So inshallah after that we will have our khutbah and after the khutbah one brother he has brought the donors you will take your donors and I don't know much more about your program so inshallah wa akhir dawana and alhamdulillah